right, all right, all right. Okay then. Good afternoon. Hmm, lighting isn't perfect. Looks a bit too high. Oh well. C'est la vie. I'm playing with the lights that I've got, and they. This doesn't work for me. As they're too high up now, I feel like I'm being showered in light. Anyway, if you're watching, this, if you're listening to this on podcast, forget about this. It doesn't make any sense. This is a video of Facebook Live first, <clears throat> then onto YouTube, and I'll tell you about those links at the back end. Welcome to my daily chat. This is this is episode 531. I think by now I've got this down, but apparently I'm still learning. Um, and the episode topic today is conflict, the discomfort of disagreement. And I want to get into this because I got some stuff in my life that's going through this and some of my history and some current events, and this may help you as well. Before I jump into the topic, let me choose myself. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women find and create balance in life, love, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And every day for almost two years now, I've done these talks every day called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart, mostly around the area of relationships and romance, but there's lots of other stuff showing up. And today's one is one of those because it's not necessarily relationship centric, although it can be applying that area as well as other areas. And at the same time, it can be very useful in your relationship. So the theme is around conflict and disagreements because it's something we don't talk about that much. In it's certainly in my business, as it were, in the business field, it's not something we talk about in, well, actually in business or in relationships either, because somehow that's a that's a taboo subject. And frankly, with my own upbringing, that was definitely something taboo. Because just to get straight into transparency, I was raised in a family where arguing wasn't something we did. It just wasn't done. At least not that I remember. My parents never had an argument in front of me, which made my daily life suck in some ways. I'll get to that in a second. But the recognition, looking back, well, this is part of that, was I was never prepared with any skills to handle being in an argument, whether to be yelled at, respond, argue, any of that stuff. It wasn't my skills. Debating, maybe. That was a school thing, not a relationship thing or a family thing. But I was never able to do anything about that because it wasn't, wasn't something we were taught. So into my dating life, to give you that, <laughs> drop, drop the other shoe, it meant that every time I was in a relationship, an argument would be the end of the relationship for me. Meaning that I didn't have skills or a faculty or ability to respond in a conversation with a partner that actually would be able to go beyond that point. That argument would be the reason I'd leave because I thought, because of the way I was raised, that arguments and love didn't go together because my family had a loving relationship and family dynamic was wonderful, but then there were arguments. So my mind painted black and white. Love, arguments didn't go together. So it meant that my dating life couldn't include that if it was going to work. And so when it did have arguments, which happened more than once, to say the least, I would end up leaving the relationship. Yes, I would be the one quitting because I had this wiring inside that arguments and love don't go together. I didn't learn till much later that actually a lot of times arguments are from a place of caring, which means love has to be present for there to be an argument. And I'm not saying that arguments have to happen because of love. No, not that way around. So it was a game changer for me when I realized that and learned that. I missed out on all the makeup sex and all the other jokes I could play on this. Yeah, you get the picture. So my upbringing with arguments with um, conflicts or disagreements isn't well practiced and wasn't well practiced as a kid. So let's be clear about that. In fact, I didn't learn how to do that in high school either. Which is why I got bullied for five years. So I definitely went through my own version of um, growth the hard way. <laughs> Since then, though, I've had a lot of exposure, experience, growth, learning, lessons about life and love and relationship ever since, which is why I teach all this stuff, because over 30 years now, I've gotten quite a bit of experience and study. And so one thing I'm aware of with this challenge, because I had a couple of recent um, interactions, actually three different interactions with people who I know, um, that really would messed up for me, because I'm not a big fan of arguments. I mean, as you said, I said from a background, I wasn't trained in it or raised in it in a family dynamic. So arguing was something that wasn't really, wasn't my preference. So to be in that arena, that, that conversation was always challenging for me. And so with these people, these women, well, two of them were women, by the way, these women in particular, um, I felt I was stopped in my tracks because I didn't have any faculty to respond. And truth be told, in one case, it was something so outside my comfort zone or reference point, I didn't know what to do with it. In the other case, actually they were both very similar in a way, um, in the other case, sh I felt, again, my perspective was, she was judging and labeling me with, with um, 
negative terms that felt basically not hurtful, but unearned. And so I felt frustrated because I felt like I didn't deserve the treatment I got. And what I'm sitting with, because I want to sit in my experience, not about what they did or didn't do, because there's nothing about them really. It's about how do I respond? How do I act? And what do I do with it? Part of me wants to just gloss over and forget about it, which is very tempting because that's, again, part of my upbringing. But I'm using this venue right now to talk about this because it may help you as well. After those two conversations, I've been sitting with what questions could I ask to get clarity? Not to prove a point, not to make them wrong, but to get clarity so that I can actually understand where they were coming from. And I posted a meme about 15 minutes before I did this broadcast about the perspective people have. And if you haven't seen it, it's one of those optical illusions where it looks like it's um, three bars on one side, from the other side it's like four bars. And so based on perspective, you get a different response. And in fact, there's actually a, a old, old story about, um, is it three or four blind men um, figuring out what, what, were basically trying to find out what an elephant was, or they were basically, they were presented with an elephant and then they were trying to find out what it was. And one person said it was like a snake because they were feeding the trunk. One said it was like a tree because the trunks were so um, solid. I mean, because the legs were so solid, like trunk, tree trunks. I did say that right, didn't I? Anyway, so the bottom line was that based on perspective, we have different input. And so that perspective gives different viewpoints. And those viewpoints can lead to conflict because we can see things from one way and the other way. In fact, an old analogy I remember from, actually, I'm using a Sony even things I've seen this on. God, you think I get this lesson by now. Um, in one seminar I was in once, we did a whole thing with a beach ball. We talked about a beach ball as perspective because the challenge with a beach ball often is, not challenge, excuse me, the thing with a beach ball is it usually has more than one color. It could be two two colors, one on one side, one on the other. It could be four, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, for example, if, I, if we're looking at, if I have a beach ball in front of me and on one side is white, one side is black, if I show you the side, if I show you the side that's black, I'll see the side that's white. So you may say what you see in front of you is a black ball, and I'll say what I see in front of me is a white ball, a beach ball. Have you understand this? And in fact, it wouldn't be until we took full circle and took both perspectives, we'd know the fact that we we're both right. And this is one of the things about arguments. For me, one of the challenges I have is sometimes I wish I could see through the other person's eyes, in, eyes in a way, the lens, so that I'd understand what they were seeing, because apparently they believe they're right, and yet I believe I'm right. So how does that work? And so I'm learning that's not easy, how to not get so invested in my perspective and my rights that I'm not fighting against them, but in a place where I don't, also don't give up my position. Because the other part about arguments, because again, because of my upbringing, is it'd be very easy to abdicate my role. Meaning that if there was an argument between the other person and myself, I would give in quickly just to get out of the argument, and which was not necessarily the right thing to do. It certainly stopped the argument, but it didn't feel valuable or effective or end up resulting in anything beyond resentment, because that's the other thing. With not resolving the argument or the, the conflict, there was a build-up of resentment, which isn't functional either. And I'm still working through my process on this, just to be clear that you're, you're, I'm explaining this journey with where, I am, where I've been, where I am, and where I'm going. So it's not all one thing right now. But I know how to work it, so I'm working through it. So part of it is communication, definitely. But it's from a place of ownership. And this is the thing that I really was, I didn't do well last night, I thought. I thought I did better, but apparently not was that in my response to this other person, I thought, and I, I believe I was, and I, again, apparently I was wrong based on results, that what I was expressing to that person was a position of what I experienced and what I, what I felt, what I saw. I'm not saying you did this or you were that or whatever, because that's the way you get in the problem of conflict, because you start blaming, judging, and throwing crap at the other person. But I said what I experienced, what I thought, what I saw was this. The challenge, of course, in this case, was a Facebook post that went back and forth, it's now gone, so it's not out there to you to see, was text, as I said before on other broadcasts, texting is so ineffective for effective communication. Even verbally, it's challenging. Sometimes you've got to see the person face to face to see the facial expressions and the way they talk and listen to the lilt of their voice and the sound and tonality to really know what they're saying, what it means, because there's so many different ways of being heard. And so in this conversation by text, by, by words, it was clear that what I was saying, what was typing, wasn't being received the way I meant it. And that frustrated the hell out of me. Because the reality was, I didn't want to be in conflict with this woman. This one was last night, the other one either for that matter. But the truth for me was that I felt helpless because I couldn't respond in a way because every time I did respond, I thought cleanly, I was getting more, what I felt, 
judgment thrown at me, which didn't help anything. Now, I'm not, again, I'm not saying what right or wrong. I'm going to speak to what my experience was. And so when I'm really getting clear for myself more and more in this work, as I do this work deeper and deeper, it was hitting me today, actually, I was out riding my bike and I was just sitting with this, like, am I losing everything? Am I falling apart? It's like, no, the truth is, re the reality is this. I'm actually pushing away into my next level of understanding, my next level of growth, which sucks in some ways. <laughs> but it's powerful in other ways, because the thing is, I know this stuff, this well, but apparently I've got another level of integration, another level of evolution to go to, where I can start seeing this opposition in conversations from a different perspective because I talk about this and I've done this work quite a bit but there's still layers I'm still working through because I'm not you know there's never there's never, never ability to be perfect at this it's always a layer upon layer upon layer upon layer expression and experience and 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 um, understanding it grows so what I'm trying to let me see if I can get back to the title make sure I'm clear so conflict the discomfort or disagreement yeah I definitely explained that part <laughs> and for me um, I don't know if she'll watch this broadcast. She, she, she watches some broadcast, some other one she doesn't. But my, my feeling is I, I don't necessarily make an apology because I don't think I was actually wrong. And yet, I want to clear the air because I want this to be clean because where we both stand, I believe, is on the same side, the same conversation. But because of perspective differences or because of whatever was going on between that in that conflict, what got, be, what got between us created a widening chasm of disagreement. And that sucked personally so the again discomfort of disagreement it was painful I, I felt frustrated I mean I went to be honest I went to bed last night without resolution and it's it was kind of dis un I was kind of uncomfortable in terms of I wasn't feeling at peace inside which I'd, I'd rather do before I go to sleep but I knew I just couldn't get it resolved so today's been my process day for this so what I'm attempting to let you know about as an, a way of thinking about this is that first knowing that other people have different perspectives as crazy and silly as that sounds knowing that other people have different perspective that might be valuable might in some cases i know it's not i'm no, just judging certain other people in the well no i'm going to go there but the reality is other people have perspectives that might be right for them doesn't mean it's right for us but it might be right for them so acknowledging that first puts you in a place where you're not necessarily going i'm right they're wrong period because that's the that's actually the most limiting place to be just as limiting saying, I'm wrong and they're right, because I did that a few times in the past as well. It's more about saying, if we're both right, what is it that we're standing in position of that is truth that we can come to agreement on? That's really the way through this. So we get to a place of resolution, because for many people, they're not willing to look at that. They're so attached to their egos, and I, I, and I am at times too. I'm getting better at it, where we're not willing to move forward and go, okay, so what is possible about what they're saying that is true that maybe I missed and what is true that I'm talking about that maybe I can shift to see that matches what they're talking about I'm not saying you, do, you go over their side completely ideally it's a two way street and there's actually communication on both sides but some of the terms that I got labelled with last night some, a couple of them stung because I really am sitting with are they true or not because part of me is going how is it possible that they that they would say that about me now one they don't know me very well first of all so I can say that's an excuse but the truth is, I'm looking and going, have I done any of that behavior? And I'm sitting with it, and I'll be looking cl like clearly and going, I don't think so. So maybe their truth is not matching mine. Maybe there's no way through this, I don't know. But I wanted to sort of speak about this as a, as a teaching, because that helped me as well. In case you hadn't figured out, my broadcast a lot of times are for me as much as it is for you. <laughs> so much I'm teaching stuff out there, it's more for reminding myself of the truth. Um, so I hope it's been of help to you. There's a couple of things I think might be in here as well. Um, I think that's it for now. Truth to truth, discomfort for not knowing the truth. This is the other thing. When there's a disagreement, yeah, I'm going to do this one too. When the disagreement is about perspectives where one is an actual lie coming out versus truth, there is no meeting in the middle for that one. But, and, there can be illumination of both sides that's possible. And that's not necessarily easy to do, but it's something that I would suggest you look into so you don't go, well, they're wrong, therefore I'm going to listen to them. I have a conflict with somebody else about that where I, we both believe we're both wrong. The other person is wrong, which is really interesting to sit in that position of going, well, I know I'm right. I've got proof of that. So how can they be right too? That's another conversation I get to have. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> this is this is a, 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 a an, an un unpacking process, an unpacking of a suitcase of stuff. So I hope this has been of value to you, helpful to you too. There's something I know we all work through because arguments do happen and difference of opinion happens. Looking at the political divide in this country, particularly, and other countries too, it's clear that there are people taking sides of who's right, wrong, who's right, the other one's wrong, who's right, the other one's wrong, where there's a total like opposition of a look, so there's no meeting together. So this may become something I'm going to talk further about because I realize more and more for all of us there's a room for us to grow into understanding of other people. An understanding where we can get beyond the pain, the hurt, the conflict, where we can actually get to a place of agreement in the sense of understanding each other. Not saying I agree with you exactly, but like for example in the political um, opposition happening in this country, there's nobody reaching across to say let's meet in the middle. There's always reaching across saying I want my side to be your side and that's not going to work. So on a political level, there's room for the growth. Same as on a personal level. So I hope this is this is sparked some ideas for you too. And I trust that my personal stories were effective as well, because it's the truth of my own experience. Um, with that, I think I'll wrap this up. I am, and I have been today, um, practicing what I preach, which is doing, which is being, you know, doing the self-love practice, which I'll put in the comments because I keep promoting that. And if you want that? I know you do. <laughs> um, then again, you might disagree with me. Um, but the self-love practice that I've been, that I, te that I teach and I use, the meditations that I use have been helpful as well, but it's also working through the process. So if you want some help in the area, reach out to me. Um, if you find challenges in the conversations where you're not getting clarity about understanding both sides, let's talk. Maybe, maybe I can help you. No, no guarantees, but maybe I can help you. Um, and that's about it. Oh, quick reminders, because again, this is Facebook Live first, then YouTube, then podcast. Where you can find my replays on this is my Facebook Live that goes to my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby author, and then everywhere else my social media is Barry Selby, my name. So on YouTube, that's my channel. You can subscribe to my channel on YouTube, and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. Um, you can watch them all there; they're all in sequence from oldest, newest to oldest. And then on my podcast, which is on iTunes, which is Messages from the Masculine, I'm putting a bunch of them up there slowly but surely in audio format, so you can listen to them when you're driving, riding, working out, whatever it is. See, so I'm here to serve you. <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put it in the comments below. I'll respond when I sign off. And again, I'll put the link to the self love practice in there so you can get some clarity if you want that. Um, so, how do you deal with arguments? How do you deal with conflict? How do you feel about disagreements? That I'd like to hear from you. With that, I'll see you again tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time, once again. Uh, the same time, same bat channel. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you again soon. Bye.